This video will be on the process of transcription in prokaryotes. So there are three stages. Uh, initiation, or how things get started, how the RNA polymerase gets to the gene. Elongation, how the RNA is produced. And then termination, how things end up. How the cell knows where to stop transcribing and where the end of the gene is. Uh, these processes are different in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, and so we will be talking separately uh, about prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This particular video is just looking at prokaryotes. First, I want to look a little at the structure of a prokaryotic gene. This is a general gene structure. So every gene at the DNA level, there's a region that is uh, that is going to be transcribed, right? So this is the RNA coding region in orange, and right before that, there are some sequences called a promoter, which help that RNA polymerase to get recruited, and at the end, there are some sequences called a terminator, which tell it to stop transcribing. Now, every time this partic a particular gene is transcribed, the same exact region is always transcribed. So it always starts at the same base, transcribing, and ends at the same place as well. Um, if you look at this RNA coding sequence and then uh, look down here at, at the RNA that gets made, what you might also notice is that the protein coding sequence is slightly different than the RNA. And so the place where trans transcription starts, right here, and here on the RNA is different from the place that the uh, that translation starts. This little intervening region is called the five prime untranslated region. Sometimes it's also called the leader sequence. Likewise, at the end, so the protein coding region will end. You have the stop codon, and then there's a there's a little uh, trailer sequence, as sometimes it's called, or the three prime untranslated region, which uh, continues on until the place where transcription ended, which was which is right at the end of that RNA. So, if you look at the genome, you know the genome sequence of an organism, right? How is it that the cell knows where the genes reside, right? It just looks like a whole big gibberish of G's, A's, T's, and C's, right? But there are particular sequences that the cell can recognize and say, aha, that's a gene. So one of those sequences is in the promoter region. And again, so let's just look at this at this figure, this diagram. So for every partic every single gene, there is a there's a spot where transcription will start, and that's called the plus one site. Okay, it's shown in, in this figure right here after the promoter. And then there's a little intervening sequence here where you'll get RNA. This is going to be the 5' prime UTR. And then this is the beginning of the protein coding region, the a ATG, that codes for methionine. Now, if you look at a number of different genes, and here's a whole bunch of genes that we've lined up the sequence, all of them, they're plus one sequence starting at the same place here. If you look in the promoter, which is before that plus one site, what you'll find is that there are certain conserved sequences that are found in all genes. Now, if you go backwards from the plus one site, we call these the minus. Right, this would be minus one, minus two, etc. And about ten bases before that plus one site is a region of conserved uh, sequence called uh, the minus ten box, and that that sequence is something like T A T A A T. And then you go back another approximately you know fifteen bases additional, and you get to another conserved sequence which is at the minus thirty five. Uh, position. And so these two uh, conserved sequences are actually where the RNA polymerase will bind and you know help to recognize that there's a gene there and the RNA polymerase should bind so transcription can happen. So those are the DNA sequences that uh, are important, the minus 10 and the minus 35 sequences. Now let's talk about the proteins which bind to those sequences. So there are two main parts. There's something called the core enzyme of RNA polymerase, and this consists of two alpha subunits, a beta subunit, beta prime, and an omega subunit. 
There's also the sigma factor, which is shown in blue here. And so it's the sigma factor that actually binds to those conserved sequences in the promoter at the minus 10 and the minus 35 boxes. And the sigma factor binds there, and then it recruits the rest of that core enzyme, all of those other subunits. And once all of this stuff is sitting there ready to go, the sigma factor is what actually separates those two strands of DNA to allow transcription to begin. Once the sigma factor does that and transcription begins, the sigma actually falls off. It's completed its job and it, it'll go on to bind to another promoter. Um, in contrast, that the rest of that core enzyme is going to continue on uh, transcribing uh, during elongation. One thing I just want to say is that bacteria actually have a couple of different versions of their sigma factors. So this one is called sigma 70. Uh, this is, you know, common, commonly used during normal vegetative growth. But there are some other sigma factors which are used in sort of unusual circumstances and have slightly different recognition sequences on the DNA sequence. Okay, so that core enzyme now is shown as this, this, this purple, um, purple oval. And during elongation, what happens is uh, the RNA will start to be formed and you have these new ribonucleotides coming in, complementary base pairing with the template strand of the DNA, and about 10 nucleotides of DNA RNA duplex will form in this transcription bubble. And as this RNA gets longer, then what's going to happen is that that extra RNA will start to kind of hang out the end of that transcription bubble. As transcription on this gene continues, that DNA is going to continue unwinding in this direction. So more ribonucleotides can be added to the three prime end here, and it will rewind in this direction. So you have a small region that's moving down the DNA and um, synthesizing a, um, a RNA as you go. The last stage of transcription is termination. And just want to point out that elongation is going to continue past the end of the protein coding region um, on the RNA and into this 3' untranslated region until it finally hits that termination sequence. So in prokaryotes, there are two kinds of termination sequences, uh, intrinsic and row dependent. So we'll talk about intrinsic first, and this is called intrinsic because it is uh, based solely on the sequence of the RNA and the DNA that is being transcribed, and there are no other factors that have to be involved in this process. So um, intrinsic termination uh, depends on the formation of something called a hairpin loop in the RNA structure that is being uh, that is being transcribed. And so this RNA that has just been transcribed will actually base pair with itself and form this little loop um, with these with these um, these uh, base pairs that are a complementary base pairing with each other. Immediately following that hairpin is a series of U's on the RNA, okay, and it's A's in the DNA shown up here. And what happens here is when there's a string of, of A's and U's, uh, remember that these form um, only two hydrogen bonds in the base pairing between those, and it's a little bit weaker interaction than if there were, there were some G's and C's in there. And so what happens is that the RNA polymerase kind of senses that this is a little destabilized and it will pause and just try to backtrack a little bit in order to make sure that everything's okay. Now, it can't backtrack very well because that RNA is forming this hairpin loop. And so what happens in that case is once the RNA polymerase tries to backtrack, it just completely destabilizes, and the whole thing falls apart at that point. Okay, so the RNA comes loose, the RNA polymerase comes off, and the DNA winds back together again. The second type of termination signal is something um, it is called row-dependent termination, and it is called this because it uses a protein called row, which is shown in this figure in blue. 
And so here's the RNA that's coming out of that transcription bubble, and there is a particular sequence on the RNA that is being synthesized called the RUT site, R-U-T. And the RUT site is where Rho actually binds, and then Rho sort of somehow binds the RNA in a certain way that causes it to be destabilized. And so uh, it kind of pulls that RNA out of that that transcription bubble and everything falls apart. Okay, so the RNA is free um, and it sh on this particular figure it shows that it's already starting to be translated and the RNA polymerase falls off, the DNA DNA-DNA hybrid reforms.